Sri Lanka has embarked on an ambitious journey to transform itself into a leading global city by reclaiming two square kilometers of land from the Indian Ocean. The country seeks to emulate Dubai's remarkable transformation from a desert landscape into a luxurious metropolis, featuring the world's tallest skyscraper, the Burj Khalifa. China, inspired by Dubai's success, shares a similar vision for Sri Lanka, selecting the country as the location for its own extravagant city project. The planned port city will span 65 million cubic meters of sand, boasting glass skyscrapers, a vibrant financial district, luxury hotels, a theme park, and much more. Since the end of the Civil War in 2009, Sri Lanka has made significant strides to attract skilled workers back to the country and foster sustainable economic growth. With its strategic location, nestled between Dubai and Singapore and in close proximity to New Delhi, Kuala Lumpur, and Bangkok, Colombo has vast potential. However, the city's coastal positioning has limited its urban expansion, confining substantial development to the outskirts. To overcome this limitation, the Port City of Colombo project, jointly financed by the Chinese and local governments, reclaimed two square kilometers of coastal land to accommodate extensive commercial, residential, and public spaces. As the largest private sector development in Sri Lanka's history, the endeavor is expected to generate 80,000 new jobs, revitalizing the country's economy and ushering in a new era of progress and prosperity. Embarking on an ambitious land reclamation venture, the Port City Project features five unique zones, the Financial District, a Central Park, Island Living, Marina, and International Island, which together create an integrated urban ecosystem across 269 hectares. Of this area, 173 hectares are designated for market lands. China's machinery has boldly transformed Colombo's iconic coastline into the foundation for an advanced financial hub, attracting attention and piquing curiosity. As the project advances, overcoming various setbacks and controversies, the Port City project will implement its own economic and commercial legislations, boosting its appeal to multinational companies. The strategic position of the zone, near crucial Indian Ocean routes, greatly amplifies the project's desirability. The urban ecosystem's five cohesive zones encompass over 5 million square meters, a capacity to host nearly 80,000 residents, and welcome an influx of 250,000 daily commuters is planned. The environmentally conscious master plan envisions lush open spaces, waterways, and public squares accommodating pedestrians and cyclists, with the aim of reducing automobile traffic and congestion. Building heights will be carefully orchestrated, with taller structures located closer to the mainland and receding gradually towards the waterfront. Land reclamation for this innovative ocean district commenced in 2014, using 3 million cubic meters of quarry material sourced within 50 kilometers of the project, supplemented by over 40,000 precast concrete tetrapods to construct an impressive breakwater. The realization of this groundbreaking waterfront development signals a remarkable accomplishment in engineering and urban planning. As an impressive testament to engineering, a massive 20-meter-high, 3.2-kilometer-long barrier has been constructed to protect Colombo's emerging port city from the region's volatile monsoon weather. Undeterred by the damages caused by a 2017 cyclone, 65 million cubic meters of marine material were meticulously used to create the land upon which this ambitious cityscape stands. The reclamation process concluded in 2019, and the Sri Lankan government officially recognized the area in December of that year. Yet the remarkable engineering behind the Port City project has its share of controversies, marked by concerns about its ecological impact. Environmental groups, local stakeholders, and even the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka expressed apprehensions over the potential detriment to the coastline. Fishermen residing north of Colombo asserted that the excavations disrupted marine life and threatened the livelihood of approximately 8,000 individuals relied on the fishing industry for their income. The destruction of habitats and coral removal generated additional concerns about ecological imbalances that extended beyond the immediate fishing community, impacting onshore and transportation workers. The Center for Environmental Justice posited that the new city could strain Sri Lanka's natural resources beyond reasonable capacity, with experts estimating a requirement of over 100 million cubic meters of sand 
Fragile marine ecosystems faced potential ruin, while the livelihoods of 15,000 fishermen in the mining area stood at risk. The center also argued that the actual cost of the required sand, $3.2 billion, far exceeded the initial budgeted $1.4 billion allocated for the city's construction. In addition to these concerns, air pollution levels were projected to worsen, with the new financial district expected to generate 300,000 daily car trips in a city already grappling with air quality surpassing World Health Organization guidelines. The process of conducting an environmental impact assessment for the Colombo Port City project took nearly 12 months, demonstrating the importance placed on addressing environmental concerns. Additionally, questions have emerged about the extent of China's involvement in this major Sri Lankan development. The Port City project is part of China's One Belt, One Road initiative, a grand infrastructure plan with aims to strengthen connections between China, the Middle East, Europe, and Africa, much like the ancient Silk Road. The potential establishment of a new trading route for China into the Indian subcontinent and its burgeoning markets brings along concerns of deals with negative consequences, as seen in past interactions between China and Sri Lanka. The Hambantota port, for example, opened in 2010 after a $1.3 billion investment from Chinese banks, but due to significant losses and payment issues, it was leased to China for 99 years in 2017. Another ill-fated venture is the Mathala Rajapaksa International Airport, which despite receiving Chinese loans worth hundreds of millions of dollars, served only 1,536 passengers in 2019. Determined to evade similar outcomes, developers are currently working on constructing Colombo's International Financial City project. The completion of land reclamation in 2019 marked a significant milestone, with the marina now in its final stages and the opening of the district's first building planned for this year. To attract external investors, a joint marketing campaign between the government and Colombo will showcase investment opportunities in the port city. Although Sri Lanka has faced disappointments in previous ventures and controversies surrounding the port city project, the nation remains optimistic that this endeavor will eventually achieve its objectives, opening a floodgate of new capital into the country. The intentions behind developing a port city are commendable, and its successful implementation could positively impact Sri Lanka's economy. However, the key to the project's success will be effective management. What do you think about the port city Colombo in Sri Lanka? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to Nonstop the Luxury.